This is another live radio link up brought to you by the government communications GCIS. 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 The time has gone 15 minutes after the hour, 6 o'clock, and it's a very good evening to you. Welcome to our broadcast, and it's brought to you courtesy of Government Communication and Information System, the GCIS, in partnership with the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. This is the very first Let's Talk Justice Live Your Rights show that we're going to have, and it's going to be happening every Thursday from now on. So uh, quite excited as a team, um, all the team members from the GCIS radio new unit have joined us uh, to really start this whole journey and um, making history really in a way and thanks to the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development for having done this for us. So for the next uh, 20, now this is the 26th episode, so for the next 25 years to come, we're really going to learn a little bit more about what the department is all about and so forth. My name is Karabalan, Government Communication and Information System, the GCIS, Justice and Constitutional Development. Government Communication and Information System, the GCIS, Justice and Constitutional Development. And joining us in the studio, we are very happy to welcome Deputy Minister of of Justice and Constitutional Development, uh, Deputy Minister John Jeffrey. It's a very good evening to you, DM, and thank you so much for having taken time to be with us. Sure, thanks for having me, and good evening to all the people listening in. Right, here's an inv- invitation to you as a listener to take part in this show by calling in with your questions or comments on our toll free number. It's 0800 142 446. I'll repeat that number again. It's a toll free number, by the way. So, in other words, if you're going to be using a telecom line or your landline, you're not going to be paying a single cent for this. If you're using a cell phone, however, make the initial call. Our producers will take your details as fast as possible and then call you back, in other words, saving you costs. So thank you so very, very much for that one there. So 0800 142 You can check us out on Facebook as well at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Uh, we welcome your tweets as well on Twitter. Uh, you can tweet us at at D-O-J-C-D underscore Z-A. Let me repeat that one again. At D-O-J-C-D underscore Z-A. And you're also welcome to chat to us. This is very important. Very welcome to chat to us in any language of your choice. If we don't understand you, we might ask you to translate in English, but geez, I mean, really, just go for it. In any language of your choice, you're more than welcome to engage us. Without wasting any further time, Deputy Minister, quite excited to be here as well. I saw and we were having a chat quite earlier. And uh, I'm looking forward to learn as well about the department, uh, DM. Maybe let's start there. Maybe, maybe, maybe let's talk about um, the department itself, the mandate and the vision, perhaps, of the department, uh, DM. Okay, Karabo, the, the, the mandate's twofold, uh, to ensure access to justice for all. And secondly, the department has a responsibility to promote the constitution and contribute in building a human rights culture in our country. Mm -hmm. Just like any other department, Mm -hmm. I believe uh, the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, they've got priorities as well, which is very, very important. Mm-hmm. Well, look, the, the, there's a number of priorities. It's a very big department with a number of areas. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the one that everybody knows about on the one hand is is the courts, right. uh, criminal courts uh, when you've somebody's been accused of committing a crime, and civil courts when there's a dispute between uh, two individuals. But even at the courts, uh, there are various other services offered. Uh, for example, maintenance uh, people will go to a court to to claim maintenance uh, mm. from the other parent of the child. Uh, the issue of getting a protection order um, in the case of, of somebody being abused at home, a domestic violence protection order, right. a uh, protection from harassment order. Uh, then there's the master's office, which deals with uh, deceased estates where people have passed away and what happens to their property after they've, uh, they've passed away. Uh, through to... 
uh, legal aid where people get representation mainly in criminal courts or in criminal cases, but they can also get some assistance in civil matters. Um, yeah, a, a, a range of a range of issues. All right, that is the voice of the Deputy Minister um, John Jeffrey right here um, on in our studio in our show. And uh, later on, uh, you're going to be giving us a call on the toll-free number. Should you have any questions or comments, uh, the number is very very easy. It's oh eight hundred one four two double four six. That's oh eight hundred one four two double four six. Um, and um, we we're talking with some of the colleagues from the department, and we were saying there's a, a misunderstanding that's the people misunderstanding this department that we're talking about now and the Department of uh, Correctional Services. And perhaps one or two differences that you can maybe want to bring to the picture, uh, DM? The, the issue is there are two separate departments. Um, before the last elections, there was a Minister of Correctional Services and a Minister of Justice and Constitutional Development. Uh, the president decided to combine uh, the two matters under one minister. Mm -hmm. uh, so you currently have a minister of justice and correctional services. That's Minister Mike Masuta. Right. You then have two deputy ministers, uh, one for correctional services. That's uh, Deputy Minister Tabang Makwetla and one for justice and constitutional development. And that's that's me. But the departments remain separate. So it's not as if. Uh, the departments have been merged. They're separate and they remain, uh, they will continue to remain separate. So there's a Commissioner of Correctional Services, there's a Director General of the Department of Justice. All right. Now, Minister, I would like us, we know that we've got quite a couple of programs that are still to come every Thursday, like I said before. Um, uh, th there's quite a couple of them that, that we're going to do. But for now, I'd just like us to j maybe just go uh, in, 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 in explaining some of these uh, services uh, that uh, the department has. I'm um, talking about uh, the maintenance uh, courts. I'm talking about um, the master services and, and so forth, Minister. Maybe let's start with this one, which is very popular. We'll get into it as a program by itself in the future. But for now, maybe let's just a bit of explanation when it comes to the, the maintenance courts mm -hmm. and how they work and, 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 and why they there and so forth. They're, they're there largely uh, to ensure that uh, children um, who, um, whose parents are, not, are no longer married to each other or were never married are properly supported. So um, if the one parent, usually the man, is, is working and the mother is, is not employed or not earning so much, uh, then the mother can approach the maintenance uh, court mm -hmm. to uh, get an order, a court order, that the father must pay maintenance. Uh, the one thing to understand is the maintenance, the, 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 the requirements basically are that the person who's looking for support must be unable to maintain himself or herself, um, usually the child obviously, the family member, and this is a very important point, the family member from whom maintenance is claimed must be able to afford the maintenance. So if you're a, a father and you're unemployed, you've got no income, you've got no, uh, no property or anything, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you can't be forced to pay for the maintenance of your child. And where people, we've just passed an amendment in, in, in Parliament, it's halfway through, it's been through the National Assembly, it's now with the National Council of provinces to toughen up, to tighten up on, on people who default, who don't pay their maintenance, and to understand that those are people who the court has found can pay maintenance. And right. obviously, if your right. circumstances change, if you've been ordered to pay maintenance and you lose your job or, or something like that, all you've got to do is go back to the court and tell the magistrate, my circumstances have changed. I no longer can afford to pay this amount. But what we're trying to catch is the people who can afford to pay and, and don't. don't. Which is which brings me to my next question. Um, this one uh, coming from uh, Facebook, and thank you so much to Melanie Love, uh, who's taken some time to post a question on our Facebook page. Now, what services uh, do you offer when it comes to maintenance and the maintenance default are being in contempt of court? And we've just answered a bit of that, but she would like to know how does one enforce a maintenance order? And if defaulters are in contempt of court, what are the procedures that can be taken against them? Um, obviously, the, the, if, if the person is in default, uh, the person claiming maintenance can start taking steps such as attaching their property. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and um, the there is a campaign uh, by the department to uh, chase up and um, uh, follow up with 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 uh, people who are meant to pay maintenance who don't. Uh, there was a report in the newspaper today of a Constantia uh, mother of three in Cape Town who got a total of 450,000 rand in unpaid child maintenance, uh, which is the highest amount of arrears of maintenance yet to be paid to a beneficiary in the in the Western Cape. Um, but uh, it, 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 there are measures, as with any debt, to force a debtor to pay. One of the changes that's coming into effect with the um, maintenance amendment bill that's with, as I said, the National Council of Provinces, is that maintenance defaulters will be blacklisted and not be able to obtain credit. Right. And the idea there is to increase the pressure on, on the maintenance defaulters. All right, let's go to our telephone lines, 0800 Let's talk to Mamu Konyani from Newcastle. Good evening to you, Mamu Konyani. Yeah, Baba. Ninja and Mama. Pila, <laughs> If you now Zang in Canto, now Zang in Canto, and get cut a season, move with Wooty, Nanga and Bizoba. You might be a kitchen, I told Nam Bizelan, Yang Bizelan in Canton, Yang Bizelan, Cosin Canton in Cantoluna, in a scars. It is so a lap eating in the Ublungis. Mofun was good to Blungis or Bani, eating in the Blungis or Guban, the Babega, the big busy, the big busy Lila, but then Bizela Okay. All right. All right, let's go to another caller quickly, all the way from Grey Town, Munyaka. Good evening to you, Munyaka. Yeah, Baba. Ninja and Baba. Yeah, Baba. Yeah, Okay. Babunyaka, thank you so much for your call. All right, oh one two uh I beg your pardon, oh eight hundred rather. Uh one four two double four six <laughs> my producer cracking himself up. He knew this was going to happen. <laughs> oh eight hundred one four two double four six. It's gone twenty eight minutes after the hour, six o'clock. So very good evening to you, by the way, if you just joined us. My name is Karabal so thank you so much that you're part of the show. Um it's a big one. It's one of the biggest that we've ever done actually. It's a twenty six episode series of programs. I tell you what, we could not wait the whole day uh, DM we were talking about this and we could not wait while the branding was coming in and organizing sound and all of that everybody's excited about this because we all understand that we're going to learn quite a lot about justice and the constitution of South Africa as well and so is our listeners for instance I'm looking at the Twitter now and I've got Ivor Swart and um, uh, Ivor just wants to find out uh, that he's applied for criminal expungement and was rejected and he was told that uh, he needs to apply to a presidential pardon. Um, can you explain maybe the difference, DM, when it comes to the expungement of a criminal record and a presidential pardon? Okay. Shall I start with, with that one and then come on to the That's other two, uh, two questions? That's it. Uh, the law was changed not so long ago before you, you uh, could not get your record expunged. And um, I think it was about 2008 uh, we passed an amendment which provided that in minor cases um, you could get your record expunged. And I think there's going to be a program dealing with it specifically, but it is if you were not sentenced to a term of imprisonment mm-hmm. without the option of a fine uh, and 10 years have elapsed, 
uh, then after the 10 years, you, you're, you can apply for your record automatically to be expunged. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were a child, uh, that is a person under the age of 18, uh, when the offence was committed, then you only have to wait five years. Uh, but it doesn't apply to um, uh, people who have committed sexual offences and um, uh, fraud and, 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 and matters like that. If you don't fall within that category, then unfortunately the only route you can follow is to apply for a presidential pardon. Yeah. Um, the law is being looked at um, as to uh, can't we, we uh, make further changes to allow people to get expungements more easily? Can't we allow a discretion on the part of the minister, for example? Because at the moment, the, the expungement is automatic. If you fit within that category, mm -hmm. nobody's got to think about it. They, you, you, you qualify. Yeah. Whereas if you don't, uh, the only route is a presidential pardon. All right. And then we had a caller and I will respond to, we will actually respond to Mamunya Kani just now in a short bit. Well, just on, on her question, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, was she speaking about um, a criminal arrest or a civil arrest? We'll find out. Maybe let's get my producers to actually just get that in detail. I uh, recall the person in detail and find out exactly what type of arrest it was. Well, well, look, maybe, maybe to help, because in the past, I think before 94, uh, people could be arrested if they hadn't uh, paid their debts and they could be put in prison uh, until they paid their de debts. That has long been abolished. So you can't be arrested for, um, uh, for not paying your debts. I imagine she's then talking about a criminal arrest and then you've got to appear within, uh, in, in court within 48 hours. Uh, the 48 hours does not... Uh, include weekends oh. so if you get arrested on a Friday they don't have to bring you to court on Sunday because the court's not sitting right. uh, you you can uh, you have to be brought to court by 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 Monday, Monday. Right. Um, you can though apply for bail at any time even over the weekend now here's one question that Mama Yakan has asked and it's this one here can the police arrest you without explaining to you what they're arresting you for um, I would imagine they should tell you why you've you've you're being arrested. Uh, I would think it's a problem to be arrested without without knowing why. If you get arrested, you're not read your rights. Can you refuse arrest if your rights are not read to you? Um, no, I think it would be better to. Um, I, I my fear if if somebody resists arrest, then uh, um, that may be an additional uh, charge. <laughs> Uh, um, but um, I think the key issue is you don't have to make any statement Great. Uh, unless you you are legally represented or unless you want to. Uh, you you have the right right to remain silent. All right, oh eight hundred one four two double four six. Let's go to the telephone lines again, and I believe I'm speaking to Babuzulu. Good evening to you, Babuzulu. Okay, I think we've lost that caller there. We had another um, question coming from Munyak, and he just wanted to find out yeah. the justice officers in Great Town. Yeah, look, um, the, 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 um, the regional office, which is effectively the provincial office of, of the department in KwaZulu-Natal, is in Durban. Uh, then um, the, I suppose the place to access justice is the court, and it would then be the magistrate's court in, uh, in Great Town. And so that's where services such as, uh, um, well, criminal matters, civil matters, small claims court, uh, we've got one in Greytown, we, uh, we don't have one in Crown Scorp yet, uh, and um, domestic violence matters, maintenance, those kinds of services would be, uh, would be accessed. As far as the master's office, deceased estates, uh, if the value of the deceased estates, the, the value of the property of the, the late person is less than 50,000, then it can be reported to the magistrate's court in Great Town. All right. You can hook us up on Facebook at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. That's how you can uh, be in touch with us uh, via Facebook. Otherwise, you can tweet us on Twitter at DOJCD underscore ZA at DOJCD underscore ZA. Otherwise, 0800-142-446. Dominique, all the way from Tembisa. Good evening to you, Dominique. 
All right, Dominic is not there. All right, we don't have callers at the moment. But 0800-142-446, that number is a toll-free number if you're going to be calling um, uh, via the landline. Otherwise, uh, you can use your cell phone and we can quickly get our producers to call you back in that way, saving you costs. 0800-142-446, 0800-142-446. Okay, we've touched a little bit on maintenance and we'll get into details on that in our coming shows. Let's go for a bit for the issue that's got to do with master services Mm -hmm. maybe let's start there dm for those people who don't understand the term master services and what it's all about let's maybe just unpack it for them Um, again i think there's a program on on the master services but they largely deal with uh, what is called deceased estates Uh, a estate is basically your property right uh um so your your uh the the debts that you owe uh, the amount of of money that you have the amount of assets that you have in your in your uh, estate and what the when a person and then a deceased is obviously a, a a dead person a late person what happens when a person passes away is that um the uh, responsibility is to collect all the assets, all the property, all the money that they owned, property mm-hmm. not just being um, land, right. uh, but everything they owned, to settle the, the debts that they owed, and then to distribute uh, the property according to the will if they left a will, or ac- according to the rules of intestate succession if they didn't leave a will. Uh, the other issue that the master's office also does is is uh, with insolvency. When somebody goes bankrupt, they deal with that as well. Um, but that's another another matter. All right. And then there's a difference between, I believe, uh, DM when it comes to child courts and maintenance. Maintenance. Well, here comes the word again, maintenance. But we're not going to deal with that necessarily. But a lot of people confuse. Uh, child court related matters with that of maintenance they have an intellect at some point but they differ look i think with regard to the master's office you may be talking about the guardians fund uh, which is the fund that um, money where a a parent uh, passes away uh, and uh, the child is then looked after by by somebody else uh, the money left to that child to support that child won't just be paid over to the guardian, uh, but will be paid into a special fund called the guardian's fund mm-hmm. so that there's basically control to ensure that child is looked after while they're growing up rather than paying it to a guardian uh, who then spends all the money in one go and there's no money for the child to to be supported um, in the latter years of their childhood. Mm-hmm. And does the child courts DM also got to do with the whole issue of guardianship as well? Well, well, yes. You have um, you have a children's court, and they would decide on issues such as guardianship uh, on adoption. Uh, so, if you want to a, uh, they deal also with foster care. If you want to apply for a foster care grant, uh, it would be the uh, the uh, children's court magistrate who would decide whether you qualify. Um, so they're largely a civil court deciding on 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 issues relating to the child. Right. We also have a child justice court, which is a criminal court where the uh, child has is a, is charged with a crime, and that's um, a special uh, magistrate's court, effectively uh, to to deal with the child. There's different procedures to to try and get an assessment from a probation officer as to the state of the child, uh, whether they should be held in custody, whether they can be released into the care of their parents or guardians. Um, And there's an effort to, as far as possible, uh, not have children going through the criminal justice system, uh, have them diverted onto other programs. The aim of the system is is to uh, correct the wrongdoing on the part of the child uh, rather than punishing them. Right. It's uh, all those different types of courts, um, that and more, uh, that we're going to deal with uh, in the next uh, programs. But I don't want to leave this one out, DM, just before we take callers quickly. And I see we've got a couple of callers here. But the one that um, small claims courts, uh, what, what are those? What they, what they say. Uh, they, they deal with uh, small claims. Uh, the, um, if the, the amount owed... So it's a civil matter. It's between two people. If the amount owed is less than 15,000 rand, then you can bring the case in the small claims court. 
And in the small claims court, I had a tweet from somebody just now asking, did you need a lawyer? Uh, lawyers are not allowed. Um, okay. So the idea is is to enable people to have the dispute settled for free uh, before a small claims court commissioner. Uh, the small claims court commissioner will play a more active role in the proceedings, asking questions and, 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 and things like that. And we're trying to set up small claims courts in every magistrate's court in the country. All right, let's take all this quickly. 0800 142 Do we have Dominique from Tembisa? Dominique, good evening to you. Good evening to you, Dominique. All right, let's move on. Let's go to Sipo from uh, Teguini. Yes, look at Ronald Gaim. Okay, Dominique, I'm going to ask you, is yeah, hello. Dominique Osipo, can I ask you to please Dominique, close your radio yes. down? Please, can I ask you to close your radio down yeah. before we talk, Dominique, please? Hello? Yes, can you hear me now? Look at it. Yes. Look at it. Look at it. Hello? Hey, can you hear me Hello. All right, 0800-142-446, 800 uh, Do we have another call on the line? Is it uh, Dominic Sipo? Dominic Sipo? All right, Sipo calling all the way from Eteguini. It's a very good evening to you, Sipo. <laughs> Sipo, Sipo, good evening. Hey, what's up, one of us? Ninja and Bab. I was going to Sipo, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Let's go to another call on the line. Caller, good evening to you. What is your name? Hello, Likai. Rona. Rona. Solo, 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 solo,
bar mo na bar baka sono utsisa otherwise when utsa mayo inyake la hina and then uba phone ngene uba bitor uma phumane na ana ke mo motho tsantsa dire di ana re ba amohele batho ba ile khale ba ile tsene o re tsa amohela na ke ka utlwen la mo exeme a ke le bogalo ena mamogadi gore o ile wa tsana ko gore o relele mogala mo khajong yarna ya go tshingomela go no ba the way you can speak to us in any language of your choice uh, english afrikaans is zulu tsosa all the languages in south africa are welcome this is your show you we call it live your right let's talk justice let's go all the way to ampington ampington i beg your pardon and we're speaking to george there george good evening to you Hi Karago, how are you? I'm good and you, George. All right. Excellent. And, uh, what is your question or comment? Good evening to the DM and uh, thank you to the department for recognizing that community radio is a platform that they can drive their messages through. And the DM, the current public discourse is really with regard to some of the judgments made by the judiciary against the executives and statements made by some of the most senior the ruling party in the nation to this. I know that the president will be meeting with Chief Justice, and some people say that the executive and ruling party members want to steamroll the judiciary uh, through these pronouncements against certain judgments. Do you think that we might be going into a situation where judges are under pressure to not rule against the executive or government, and where will they see the public confidence with regard to the independence and turn much of the nation? Judicial system. I'm truly worried about this public space. All right. Is that all, George? That will be all. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I thank you for having taken some time to chat to us. 0800-142-446. It's a toll-free number if you're calling from a landline. 0800-142-446. Otherwise, if you want to chat to us uh, via Twitter, you're more than welcome to hook us up at DOJCD underscore z a at d o j c d underscore z a huitsi mudimu ye no le tsale mafikeng a rutlo he huitsi mudimu ka dume di tsorena nta di le ba re tle le ka nda de mo 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 se ra bolo ke ile ra tsho a rutlo he e nta te ke ke huitsi mudimu ka le bitso ne ke fona ke le mafikeng mo right so e ni ka tla go tseba gore nta te e ke na le 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 gona le ba tshe tshwa re ne alhamdulillah <laughs> Okay, 100%. Uh, that's got to do with the whole issue that we're talking about, uh, master's courts and so forth. But we'll deal with it. Thank you so much. All right, 0800 142 446. That's our toll free number. And uh, if you want to hook us up on Facebook, it's very easy at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Otherwise, our Twitter handle at DOJCD underscore ZA. Uh, I'm, I'm saying it in, in a singing way so you can remember it. And I think DM is quite pleased with that. We'll find <laughs> out about my singing later, though. A whole lot of questions came through, DM, but the one that I would like to touch on very quickly before we forget it is this one that George um, came through with. Do you want to deal with that quickly, DM? Okay. Um, you know, we are a, we are a democracy. Uh, people can, can basically, you know, are free to comment on whatever they want. Um, I... Uh, I wouldn't have thought that that um, uh, you know there are no holy cows. I wouldn't have thought that that being critical of something is going to intimidate people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, the the judiciary had a meeting yesterday, um, and they've set up a process to to look at um, uh, engaging with the executive. Uh, they're going to be meeting with the president. Uh, so. Um, I, I 
wouldn't have thought that criticizing judges puts them under under pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think it's something to be worried about. I, I think it's something um, natural. And the judiciary criticize us publicly. <laughs> so uh, um, uh, it's it's I, I don't think it's a big a big issue. And I would be surprised if anyone is feeling intimidated by it. Right. Okay, and then we had a caller, Mokhadi, and there's one question by Mokhadi that's almost similar to that one of Khuiti Mudimu. It's got to deal with protection orders. Um, Khuiti Mudimu says um, he's being intimidated continuously and he wants to find out exactly what he can do with it. Well, the one answer could be linked to protection order, but Minister, uh, Deputy Minister, you'll deal with that. But Mokhadi, on the other hand, says, when I do have that protection order, how far does it go in terms of protecting me? How long can it last? What type of protection orders are they? Um, let's just start with it this way. Um, if you feel you, 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 you need a protection order, go to your magistrate's court um, and speak to the staff at the court. Uh, find out who is dealing with, uh, who's the, dealing with protection orders and make your statement uh, to them and they would advise you as to, to whether you qualify. It works in, and to get a protection order, you've you've largely got to show that you're you're under some kind of threat. Mm-hmm. Um, the law is quite creative; it's a new law. Um, even if you've been uh, receiving threats by SMS, for example, yeah, um, the uh, police have to assist you uh, in tracing that 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 person, even if you don't know the identity. But the protection order works in two parts. Uh, you put forward your case and you get what's called an interim order. So it's a temporary order. That then gives the person against whom the order is made, that gives you the protection, but it then gives the person against whom the order is made the opportunity to uh, come to court uh, on on what's called the return date. Uh, So you get it for a temporary period, and then the matter is set down for a particular day. And if the person against whom the order is, is made disagrees, and says you're not telling the truth or you didn't tell the magistrate the truth, uh, then they can come to court and uh, present their side of the story. And the magistrate then decides who's telling the truth. Witnesses can be called, whatever. Uh, and the magistrate will then decide uh, what, what happens. And once the order is made final, it is then final. It is then there forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the, the magistrate and if the person doesn't come to court, then the order would probably be made final almost automatically. Mm-hmm. If the person against whom the order is made does come to court and disputes it, it would be up to the magistrate to decide who's telling the truth and whether the order does deserve to be made. So I hope that uh, answers the, the question. But it's two stages, right. um, a temporary one where the other side don't have to know about it. Mm-hmm. And um, then when it gets made final, that's when the, the person against whom the order is made has the opportunity to come and state their side of the case and say, no, they, this order shouldn't be made final. Once the order is made, then um, if the person, if you continue to be harassed, uh, then that person is breaking a court order and steps would be taken against them. All right. And can one lose their protection order? For instance, if I have a protection order against somebody, are there instances where I can, I can lose a DM? What circumstances would then um, make me lose it? Well, uh, as I said, it's it's mainly two parts, and it's the interim order, and you'd lose it if it doesn't get made made permanent, and you'd lose it if you didn't have a no- strong enough case to to argue why it should be made permanent. But if it was if you've got a permanent yeah. order, um, then no, the the other side would have to probably bring a special application to to say that you've now um well to get that that order rescinded basically mm-hmm. that will take um, obviously yes yeah, so so or? what i'm saying is once the order's made final it's there uh, permanently unless the other side takes steps to to have it rescinded for whatever reason all right 0800-142-446-0800-142-446 that is our toll free number otherwise if you'd like to tweet us so you're more than welcome to do that at d-o-j-c-d underscore z-a at d-o-j-c-d 
at underscore ZA. Otherwise, you can hook us up on Facebook as well. Very, very easy. Um, that is our Facebook page at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. And um, we'll definitely uh, deal with some of the questions or comments that you might be having. Uh, let's go back to see Paul who called in earlier on. And um, here's an interesting one, DM. He says, um, the law having to say a group of people are arrested. Mm. Um, and the one or two are identified to turn state witnesses. Mm. He says, isn't that some form of bribery from the law side? The state witnesses, the co-perpetrators, um, they obviously they would be encouraged to, to testify by being given immunity from prosecution. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it would be the court that would determine uh, whether, in other words, the judge or the magistrate, whether uh, they should be given immunity. And that would depend on uh, the quality of their evidence, uh, whether it is reliable, whether it is honest. Mm -hmm. um, if there's been any bribery uh, or, or any sort of pressure, then it, it would be up to uh, the defense, the, the, the lawyers representing the accused, uh, to to try and get that out, to question the uh, the state witness about that, but it is quite a difficult issue. Um, you know, there was quite a lot of controversy over the um, uh, the, the uh, murder of of Brett Kebble, as to whether the right people were were charged uh, with his murder, or and whether the wrong people were uh, used as state witnesses. All right. And then the other one. And, and sorry, that decision as to who to use is with the prosecuting authority. Right. The other one from Sipo was the issue of maintenance. <laughs> and he says, and he actually exclaimed to say, oh, goodness me, men are in trouble. I don't know about that. But if you're blacklisted, for instance, already uh, about maybe other issues and you still cannot pay your maintenance what what's going to be what's going to be done then to that person well you 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 the pressures on you in increase but let me again stress that the new blacklisting coming in is uh not uh shouldn't affect people who can't afford to pay so as i said the maintenance order is not given automatically right. um the, there has to be an inquiry into whether the person whose uh, maintenance has been claimed from can afford to uh, to pay. Mm -hmm. How much are they earning? How many other dependents have they got? Mm -hmm. Obviously, if they would rather pay their DSTV subscription rather than maintenance for their child, uh, the court is not going to be particularly sympathetic to that. But if they've got another a number of other children that mm -hmm. they're supporting, that would be taken into account. So the amount that's set is is after an inquiry into how much do they have. Um, if And as I said, if their circumstances change, if they lose their job, uh, they should go back to court uh, to tell the magistrate, I can't afford this amount yeah. of maintenance anymore. So the blacklisting is, is for those people, and there are unfortunately a number of them, who for some reason can afford to pay but won't. Maybe because they don't, they, they fell out with the mother of the child. Uh, they've got a grudge against the mother or something like that. But yeah. they don't want, or they would rather spend the money on DSTV or a um, new Autonomous car. Baby. Oh, new car, yeah. Uh, than paying for their kids. Mm, which is not right, actually. Yeah. Um, just a couple of minutes before 7 o'clock, if you've just joined us, it's a very good evening to you. Welcome to this broadcast. A very, very uh, informative one that's going to take place from now on every Thursday every week, uh, meaning that uh, you and I are going to be informed as far as uh, justice and constitution in South Africa is concerned. We're taking your calls on 0800 142 Let's go all the way to Peter Murraysburg, uh, the, 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 the city of mist, if I can call it that. If you drive around Peter Murraysburg, run about this time and in the early hours of the morning, you'll be really uh, surrounded by mist. Vusmuzi. Yeah, Baba. Eh, Africa. 
mabe ukukhula icala lo muntu ongena mali lo muntu ongena mali lo ne mali uyawina lo ongena mali akawini ngikuthi ukuthi ukuthi yiphi indlela elandelwa ebhekwa ngaya amacala ukuthi leli icala leli kanje ngiyawina lo ukuthi kwazi ukuthi beclear sonke Yabong, well, thank you so much uh, to uh, Vosmuzi for having called. Then let's go to another caller. And my um, producer, for some reason, is trying to be creative. Okay, he says Bra Ali. Okay, <laughs> let's take Bra Ali. Bra Ali in Denkawi. Okay, I don't, I don't think Bra Ali is there. Let's move on to another caller. Pusele, to go Sosha. Ah, give me Brali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh, Brali. Uh, uh, my presenters about about road at the side. Baru kwa na Brali. What What is your question or comment? Um, um, uh, Kinali, a very serious, serious thing. Yeah. Um, ka very, isne. Okay. Um, kira ni the certificate. Kwa very, remali kwa eh eh. Tribal, Street. Now, I just want to know which one carries more weight. Hey, Ali, our Guru, what can I say? If you say Kerege, sa tribal, sa 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 Okay, Brali, you've said initially that uh, it's a serious problem that you have. So basically, this is not a general question. Um, we'll pose that question to the DM quickly, but what I would like to do as well is to get your details down so that uh, one of our officials can give you a call so they can uh, maybe just you know start taking steps in helping you with a problem that you have in your marriage. And uh, hopefully everything will go um, accordingly. And uh, yeah, we, we pray for all the best. Thank you so much for calling in. Sure. <laughs> there we go. Arego Sosha. Puseleto. Bagai go temina se go 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 di go di go 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 di karavelengo. Bachi sa di bachi sa matakala. Kesi musi friend. There we go. Puse, what's your question or comment? Okay, my comment is about the step search justice system thing with regard to whatever to maintenance thing. Right. and that guy who was not maintaining his child. Then the, the department is by and the show or deducted the money from the father's pension. So what I want to say to the DM, I want to say big up to that because it shows that our child, my child is your child. The department is also taking care of our kids for those for these irresponsible fathers. Thank you so much, Buselezo, for your words of encouragement. We really appreciate it. And the DM is sitting right next to me. And uh, he's nodding with appreciation of what you're saying. We really, really thank you so much for having uh, brought that to our attention. If you've missed out on what Buselezo is talking about, if you've caught the Pretoria News on page four, there's a good news story about what the department is doing, really. 450,000 uh, 450, rands maintenance payment as a birthday gift to divorced mum. And that's what Puselet was talking about. Let me just read you a paragraph quickly, just to tease you. Run quickly, maybe you might get a Pretoria news somewhere around. But it says, a divorced mother of three, Sally Cooper Goodwin, received what she described as the best birthday gift of all yesterday when her former husband was forced to pay, listen to this now, 450,000 rand in unpaid child maintenance. It was achieved, this. It was done. DM, would you want to talk about this a bit? No, just to encourage all the mothers out there that it is possible. You know, yes, it's, you know, it's, you know. it's, it's very much possible. And this case shows it. And it was uh, taking it from the pension, uh, the father's pension fund. Uh, so um, it... it uh, yeah, people, people who are looking after children... Um, 
parents, grandparents, even in in, in certain cases, uh, can get money from uh, the parent of the child, um, of the other parent of the child, if uh, uh, um, if that person has the money and is not supporting the child. All right. Maybe let's take on one issue quickly while I'm waiting for calls. So maybe before we do that, um, I've been told that there's one caller quickly from Durban. Let's take them and we'll deal with that issue quickly. Uh, all the way in Durban, these are the people that when you talk about winter, they kind of look at you strange and say, what is winter? What are you talking about? It's one place where it's summer all throughout and Dan lives there. Good evening to you, Dan. Hey, good evening. Bravo. How are you doing, my brother? Okay, very well. It's just raining down here at the moment. <laughs> Uh, okay, at least at least now uh, you can feel a bit of a call that we're feeling up here in Gauteng. Yeah, no, it's not that cold here. Eh? Oh, okay, all right, all right. We'll visit Durban and we'll find out ourselves. All right, what is your question or comment? Yeah, I got I got my grandson. He's now nine years old, but uh, my daughter uh, seven years ago passed away, and her husband got remarried. Now he's living on his own, and it's been years since he saw the child. Now, can I get uh, foster care for the child? All right. You mentioned in foster care. We, we're going to find out then if foster care is actually the appropriate way to do this or are there any other ways quickly. But thank you so much. We'll deal with that, okay? Okay. Get your you. umbrella ready before you go outside. You never know. You never yeah. know. Five okay. minutes after okay. 7 o'clock, 0800-142-446. That's 0800-142-446 on Twitter. It's at D-O-J-C-D underscore Z-A. And on Facebook is the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Maybe let's start with, the, the, with this one, DM, paddling back. Um, grandson living with uh with 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 a grandfather in this instance um he says his daughter passed away mm. husband got remarried mm. Mm. do we call it foster care if he's going to approach the courts to say help me in maintaining the child or what can he do in this instance it would depend on on how much the father is earning so he may be able to claim maintenance from the father mm-hmm. Um, if the father is not employed, uh, then he may be able to get a foster care grant, uh, and that would be a process involving a social worker from the Department of Social Development, right. and then going to court ultimately to a, a magistrate to decide that um, he can foster his grandchild. Right. So it would really depend on, on, on how much. I would suggest that it would be better if the father is, well, if the father's earning, uh, hopefully. Uh, to get a maintenance order against the father. All right. 0800-142-446. Eldos, we're chatting to Annie. Good evening to Annie. Bagge, bagger pads, bagger pads. Seven after seven o'clock. Uh, 0800-142-446. Bra Ali called in, and I would really like somebody to follow up. May I request? Um, Bra Ali sounded very distraught. He wants to know, he's got three marriage certificates. Mm. The one is tribal, the one is from the church, the one is from the magistrate court. Mm. Which one takes priority when trouble hits? Look, they're all, I mean, the um, a church, if you're married by a, a minister of religion, um, particularly in the Christian churches, uh, and that person is a marriage officer, uh, then that is the same as, as being married in front of, uh, before a magistrate or, or any other marriage officer. Um, we have a, um, a regime, a system for uh, customary marriages, and uh, that is set out in, in, a, in a law. Um, and basically there are rights uh, you know, the problem with, with marriages uh, usually comes when either one of the parties passes away mm-hmm. or there's a breakup of the marriage. And it, it, uh, it would largely depend on uh, whether there was, a, uh, whether there was a, an agreement between the parties before they got married. That's called an anti- antinuptial contract right. uh, as to... Um, how their assets would be uh, divided um, or kept separate. 
Um, so it's a difficult question to answer. I, I hope that his details have been obtained and we can we can follow it up with him. I'd really be grateful. Uh, like I said, Riley sounded a bit distraught there. Well, we had Vusmuzi as well, and he wants to find out. And, and this is a term that I heard, or maybe an expression that I heard during the whole Oscar Pistorius debacle. People saying, oh, no, no, he's going to go scot-free because he's got a lot of money. I mean, uh, the poor always, uh, or the rich always gets away with murder and the poor suffer. And he wants to find out, the rich against the poor, what procedures determine, is it true, this thing that people are really talking about, that the rich gets away with murder and the poor suffer? Well, I mean, in the Oscar Pistorius case, he, he did go to jail. Um, I, I know because it was such a public matter, uh, that everybody had an opinion on it, uh, but um, he didn't get off scot-free. Of course. And um, the state is appealing certain aspects of the of the matter. Um, obviously, lawyers are quite costly. Uh, that's why we are um, spend a lot of money as as the state on legal aid uh, to ensure that. Uh, well, it's a constitutional requirement that if a substantial injustice can occur in a criminal case mm -hmm. and the person can't afford a lawyer, then the state must provide them with a lawyer, and that's done through through legal aid. Uh, and legal aid are also um, uh, being able to do uh, certain criminal, uh, certain civil cases as as well. Um, we've also that's why we've also got the small claims court where nobody is allowed a lawyer. Um, but obviously, as with with uh, um, you know, the the if you can afford uh, um, a senior counsel as an advocate rather than a junior one, uh, you will probably do do better. But it's up to the presiding officer, the magistrate, or the judge. Uh, to listen to the arguments and hopefully to take into account that this is a rich person or this is a poor person who who doesn't have much money to spend on on legal representation uh, justice in 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 theory is blind uh, that's why when you see a a a picture of the the statue of the woman holding the scales right. of justice uh, she is blindfolded right, yeah. uh, so she can't see um, who's rich and who's poor um, there are also organizations, um, attorneys' organizations, who do offer representation to people who can't afford in, in, in particular cases. And then there's public interest uh, bodies who will also represent uh, people if, if there's a particular public importance in the case of benefit to others. All right, 11 minutes after 7 o'clock, almost time uh, for us to say goodbye. But before we do that, uh, but let's chat to Annie from El Dorado Park. We've lost any there. Should we take one more caller quickly? All right, uh, we're not going to do that for now. But uh, let me just encourage you that uh, we acknowledge all the Facebook queries which we uh, have received, and we could not get to all of them at the same time. But uh, don't worry about it. We are populating them, and we'll definitely deal with them next time when we do get a chance. As well as all the tweets that we've received, we'll definitely get to those as well. But one more question that I'm picking up here that we haven't really touched on now. Um, DM is the whole issue of reintegration and that's Mukhadi's question and uh, she says uh, you know we're being asked that when um, ex-offenders are coming out the reintegration into the community we should accept them we should uh, embrace them and you know sometimes even help them to to to, to further be uh, good people and good citizens but what if they continue to offend what steps should be taken there is it just the same steps as we've taken before to get them um, imprisoned well, if they're released on parole, uh, if they continue to uh, commit crimes, then they would probably uh, lose or have to be sent back to prison for violating their parole conditions. Uh, otherwise, if they've served their, their, their sentence of imprisonment and they continue to reoffend, they would have to be recharged. Mm -hmm. And obviously, when it comes to if they're found guilty to sentencing them, uh, the presiding officer, the magistrate, or the judge would take into account that they're not the first-time offender and and give them a more serious uh, um, punishment. But ultimately, it it is up to that person to decide whether they want to uh, be a law-abiding citizen or whether they want to spend their life in and out of jail. It's a choice that you got to make as a human being. Are you going to do things right? Or are you going to do things wrong? It's all up to you. But uh, either way, there's consequences. All right, that's how we come to the end of the show this evening. And uh, just to urge you, it's been an absolutely amazing one. 
I've learned so much and hopefully you've learned as well so much. Um, next week, we're going to be chatting about the Constitution of South Africa. Do you know it? Do you understand it? Have you, have you actually looked through the Constitution book at all? Uh, next week, we're going to be dealing with that. And uh, let me thank uh, Deputy Minister um, John Jeffrey for having taken his time to be with us. And he's back again next week, uh, Diem? Apparently, yes, uh, <laughs> on, the, on the Constitution. I think there yeah. are. then after that, it'll be uh, other people. And next week, I think I, uh, I, there will also be officials from the department. Uh, maybe just as a as a sort of plug um, that Legal Aid South Africa has a uh, toll free number for legal advice, and uh, that number is 0800 110 110. So if uh, there were people who um, feel that their questions were not adequately answered or who were not able to phone in, uh, they should feel free to to phone that uh, toll free number. There we go. Legal Aid South Africa can be reached on this number, 0800 110 110. That's 0800 110 110. From myself, Karabalan, so that's all that we had for you for today. 25 episodes to go. I cannot wait. As I said, next week, we're going to be chatting about the Constitution of South Africa. This is one of it. Uh, this was the kickoff uh, program for the Let's Talk Justice, Live Your Right. Um, and we're going to be doing the second episode next week. Uh, so make sure that you are there. So that's how we come to the end of this broadcast. And let me just remind you, Let's Talk Justice, Live Your Right. Because together we move South Africa forward. From myself, Karabolan, Stolo Saba, Pedil Matebe, Legerolna. Until we meet again next time, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your evening.